guys, uh, my name is Blair, and today's uh, talk is going to be quite a brief presentation on uh, I2P and what it is and you know, how we can use it. Okay? Uh, a bit about myself, uh, my name is Blair Tate, uh, also known as Jellyfish online to some people. Uh, I'm a first year ethical hacking student here at Aberty. Uh, I have a keen interest in malware detection and uh, scripting malware in uh, using Python. Okay, so what is I2P? Uh, just to start, I mean, has anyone heard of I2P or used it in the past? No, it's quite so sorry. No. Okay, well, what it really is is you know it stands for the Invisible Internet Project. It's a you know a free open source um, project which enables a, an anonymous network uh, by creating a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, transfer file transfer, uh, which helps um, you know create this anonymous network. Um, it was released in February 2003. Um, and currently is a, a beta program. You know, it's always in, in work in progress. Uh, so there's no final, you know, program itself. It's always, you know, developing. Um, it's a message-oriented uh, application. So you know, everything that you know about this program is about messaging and uh, about delivery. Um, it's all based around encrypted communications. So really, it's it's really just meant to be. Uh, so you can send files from one person to another anonymously, you know, without you know being detected. Uh, so it works through, as I said, route, uh, routing peer-to-peer uh, -peer traffic uh, to try and make a stable connection. Okay, how it all works? Well, um, this is kind of a basic diagram that I found. So there's Alice, Charlie, Bob, and Dave. And to make it simple, um, we're only going to use two people here: uh, Alice and Bob in the middle. So what happens is each when you log on to the, the, the network and you want to use the network's facilities, then each server, sorry, each user uh, has been given a two volt inbound and a two volt outbound tunnel. Okay? The outbound tunnel is the pink and the inbound tunnel is the green. So in easy to say state, you know, to, to say in easy words, you know, uh, if Alice wants to send a message to Bob, she just sends a message on the outbound tunnel. And then it'll get um, kind of certified and accepted uh, into the inbound tunnel of Bob. So really, that's how it all works. But uh, okay. So moving on. Okay. Going into kind of more deeper knowledge. Okay. When you say when Alice joins the uh, I2P network, she uploads information about her, her router. So our router info and what's it called? It's called a, a lease set. The, so it lease sets. And what that does is the router set is uh, part of the metadata which is stored into the, uh, net, net, uh, sorry, the network database within the program itself. So what happens when she logs on, she wants to talk to, to Bob, then what happens is she goes onto the database, she finds Bob, okay? she wants to connect him, she wants to send uh, data or files or whatever she wants to send. So then she gets the info, she gets the, the router info, about uh, the router itself and about the connection. Then she'll get the, the lease set, which is really the destination, as in the destination where uh, the outbound tunnel is connected to the inbound tunnel. Okay. From there, she'll uh, send a build message uh, to Bob asking pretty much, can I make a tunnel? And if he says, yeah, okay, then you know, he'll accept it and that'll keep coming across until the tunnel is eventually stable and there's a connection available. Okay. The network database is really just an algorithm. Um, I don't really know much about the algorithm myself, but um, I know it's, it's pretty hard to, to uh, encrypt and to get by. So, yeah, I'll talk a little bit about the encryption itself. Uh, the encryption itself is based on three types of encryption. There's a garlic encryption, there is quantum tunnel encryption, and there's also a thing called inter-router transport uh, layer encryption. Okay. The garlic encryption is mainly kind of based on the whole onion encryption of the Tor network, the Tor program, as you've probably heard of. So what happens is you have files or a bunch of messages, and what will happen is the program itself will gather all these messages together in a almost kind of clove, and it'll send it across the network through these tunnels, um, encrypted and secure. And um, really, it just it helps. It, you know, these tunnels are encrypted, so if any unauthorized people, you know, peers try to view the data midway, then it's, it's pretty much impossible to get by. So, um, 
yeah, the quantum tunnel encryption uh, makes sure the, the tunnel is a secure place uh, for people you know, to send mail across. Um, IP, uh, ITP features, uh, this kind of program software comes with loads of kind of inbuilt programs as it is. There's uh, web browsing, which you can do, which uh, works on um, using a browser that supports proxy. So we can do everything that Tor does, but uh, you know, you're private, you're basically just private you know, browsing. Uh, file sharing it has its own uh, in kind of pre-installed package called uh, ITP Snark, which is a, a BitTorrent program. So you can you know, download programs online on the program. It's pretty safe and pretty simple to use. <coughs> um, email, I mean, email and instant messaging are pretty much the two big things about this program. It's why people use it. They want to talk to people anonymously, and they want to talk about anonymous things, so people can see what they're talking about. Um, it has the IP, I2P boot, which is an email service uh, that they give out, and also it has an I2P messenger. Um, using a program called I2P Tunnel, you can also access uh, websites and other applications on the, you know, the main internet. Um, so, for example, like IRC chat uh, networks. Um, so, yeah. Is it really safe? Well, we know they, they say that nothing's ever 100% safe, and it's not. You know, it's in a beta, it's not 100% guaranteed <coughs> and anonymity. But it's about you know 99.9% chance you know that you know we safe and secure with. So as I said, it works on a multi-stage kind of encryption package. Uh, so yeah, you're quite safe where that is. Uh, it's almost almost impossible to intercept with the new uh, kind of quantum encryption moment. So okay, why you know why would someone use the I2B program? Well, it's. It's based around the Freenet program, which has been out for a good number of years uh, prior to I2P. But I2P is more modern, it's more current, and it's just it's really up just updating, really. You know, it's just a fresh install of, of what we kind of had previously. Um, it's also better than I2P, it's better than Tor. I mean, Tor makes you, uh, it makes you, it makes you anonymous, but it doesn't show, it doesn't make your uh, Viewing is anonymous as such. I mean, if anyone was on your system and or anyone was trying to, you know, sniff out your or analyze your traffic, and you know, never traffic, then you know they could easily possibly find out what you're looking at you know, on these websites. Uh, also, the same as dark, uh, perfect dark, which is almost like a, a kind of free, uh, open source uh, software like this. Um, it's user friendly. It's pretty easy to use. I mean, I guess anyone out there could use it. A bit of reading and that's it. You know, uh, it's a way of free speech. I mean, countries like China and North Korea and Iran and stuff, you say something and that's it, you know, you won't see the other again. So uh, it's a good way to, you know, to say something anonymous and just yeah, to get the word out. Private file transfer, I mean, I'm not saying that, you know, this is really a program that, you know, everyone should use as in, like, uh, malicious users. I mean, it, it probably does happen, but it's not the intended, to, you know, kind of way of which you should use the program. Uh, and you know it provides anonymity, you know a way in which you communicate to people anonymously. Okay, does anyone have any questions? How do you think the shutdown of uh, Mega Upload in the last couple of days will affect the use of the uh, networks? Uh, I mean, it's possible. I've read little bits and bobs about the Mega Uploads uh, website going down and uh, the guy being arrested and stuff. But I mean. I guess it'll fix it. I mean, there will always be some kind of file sharing, you know, peer to peer file sharing. Uh, there will always be, and yeah, I'm pretty sure there will always be, but it will affect uh, what's on the file sharing at the moment, I guess. Uh, but you know, I'd have to come back to you, you know, for that more in the future. Yeah. yeah. Uh, do you think they upload should be shut down? With personal. The, the what? Do you think mega upload should be shut down? It's a tough question. I mean, I guess everyone uses mega upload. I mean, if you're on video as well. It's bad. It's very bad. Uh, well, I guess, I mean, if it's not copyright and it's not, you know, stuff which is, you know, illegal, then I can understand. But I guess, you know, it is used for the wrong reasons a lot of the time. And 
the dry tank as well. Yeah. Uh, you said, I think you briefly mentioned that some information is stored. Is it, uh, I don't know if, it was, if you said it was locally on like, the routers for the network. Um, sorry, is that what you were saying? It's on the road, route on the network or is it locally? Well, as in things are stored? Yeah, you said information, and the, the connection data, I suppose. Well, the connection data is served, data is served I'm, I think it's served locally. Yeah. Um, because the whole network is is created around the rural nodes of everyone. Yeah. So you really need other people to be online for it to work. Sure. It can act like a, like a torrent, you know how it works. Uh, then my question is, um, is there any way to actually access that data? Because if it is, then it kind of blows the whole thing wide open. Um, I'm really not too sure at the moment. Uh, you know, as I said, it was very <laughs> last minute, and uh, yeah, so I'd, I'd have to get back to him, definitely. So, yeah, any more questions?